Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA Made Easy programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be getting more in depth using the input um, namespace using the Microsoft XNA framework. Now um, we've already learned about um, the gamepad tutorials and we've already learned about the keyboard tutorials. Um, now in tutorials we're going to be learning about um, the mouse and stuff and um, the mouse can be very useful in a lot of situations um, especially when making PC games and um, some of you might not think this is important you can skip this video if you don't think you'll ever need it but it's a good thing to always learn in case you will ever need it sometime in your program so let's get started right into the program so a lot of the stuff from the last tutorial has been deleted and um, I'm just going to explain the, some of the new stuff and some other stuff that I left out. So uh, let's check out the button position. Now if I was to run my program, this is what we're intending to make at the end of the program. What you, um, what you see is that, what you'll notice is that the mouse actually shows up on the screen now and I'll show you how to let that happen before the mouse wouldn't show up in the game window but there's a way to let it show up in the game window and you'll learn about that later so when I hover over show text it changes colors and when I press down on it this word shows up and when I press on it again the word disappears so the sprite font is a load our default font as normal and the button position and position it just used to load um, the button position that we pressed and the position of the text um, that we display after we press the button now let's get into color now one thing um, you'll notice here is that I spoke color with OUR at the end and I know you Americans and people of um, from other nationalities and stuff spell color with no O-U-R at the end you spell it like this the reason it's not a it's not a grammatical error it's just um for us in Canada we spell color C-L-O C-O-L-O-U-R and you spell it C-O-L-O-R so just so you guys know just so you guys don't get confused it's not a grammatical error, it's just the way I spell it, so that's the way I'm going to keep it. So, anyways, another th thing that I've um, messed up here is that all these initialized, like, button colors equal to a new color, whatever, all these stuff should be in the initialized method. I've been getting kind of sloppy with my code and putting it outside the initialized method, but for good programming practice, put it inside the initialized method, please. And um, for use other programming users, a method is the same as a function or a procedure or whatever you call it in your language, your programming language. Display is going to say, say whether we should display the text or not. The button text is the text that we display for our button. And this is the text that we want to display after we click to show, after we click the button. Okay? So in our initialize method, we initialize everything, we set our button position and our, pos our position, and this is what we have to do to set the mouse to make it visible in the game window. We do this by doing this dot is mouse visible equals true. So we set it that the mouse is visible in the game window. In the load content method, we load the font as in, last, in the last few tutorials and the update method is quite different now in the same way as um, you've learned about um, keyboards and like the the gamepad sorry you have had to do um, you've had to get the mouse state and um, the basically what this does is it allows you to check for when you do the get the to get the mouse data basically continuously checks for mouse activity on your screen okay um and just so you know for right here this code is gonna be um used basically around the same way for collision you might not be understanding it now 
but just even if you're not interested in the mouse tutorials pay attention to this because in subsequent tutorials when we learn about um, collision and stuff uh, we're gonna be using around this not the same not the same like um, statement block but something similar so pay attention so um, basically right in this first statement block we're just checking to see if the mouse is not hovering over the button and um, we do this first um, for many reasons um, just for simplicity of code and sometimes you want to do things if it's not act indeed hovering over the certain object that you want to click or a certain object you want to do something with right so um with this we say if the mouse x is less than the button position x so if it's to the left of it or if the mouse y is less than the button position y coordinate so if it's above it or if the mouse x is greater than button position x plus font dot measure string button text dot x and if you don't know what this is look up the 3d um, effects tutorial my last tutorial and at the end of the video you'll be able to click below and click previous and then when you click that link it will bring you to the previous tutorial where you can watch to see what this does or you can look on the Microsoft website either one that floats your boat so this is saying that if this the mouse position is uh, um, farther out um, to the right of the to the right of the button and if the mouse Y is um, too far below the actual button so this is what this is checking so it's checking to see if the mouse is nowhere inside the box's coordinates so if the mouse is not hovering over the text or the button then we change the button color to the default color of black and I don't know if I explained this earlier but um, you might be wondering what is new color zero 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 well um, these zeros represent color intensities um, I'm not sure if I, exp I don't know if I explained this in earlier videos but it's, it's always great to re-explain stuff so remember when you were finger painting um, like in kindergarten and stuff and you used to mix colors together and you so when you mix certain colors together they make new colors well in in uh, in x and a and a lot of other graphic libraries they use the rgb color system r stands for red g stands for green and b stands for blue um these numbers can range from 0 to 255 and the higher the number is the greater the intensity is so if say for example I put 255 here then the red intensity is at full intensity so there's a lot of red no there's no green values and there's no blue values meaning that this color is gonna stand for red say I mix red a full intensity of red and full intensity of blue I have a, a full red I have no green and I have um, a full blue which will give us sort of a magenta color. Say I put 127 by 127 and I put 127. That might give me sort of a grayish color. And if you like to see the RGB colors of your favorite, the RGB scale of your different, the colors that you enjoy, then just search up on Google. They have a lot of them on there because the RGB color scale is very widely used even in 3d game programming so make sure you get used to it the main the two main color formats are hex and a hex stands for hexadecimal and um rgb for the red green blue color system so anyways what we do is that if they're not pressing if they're not hovering the button then we set it to the default color of black and if they are hovering over the button then we set it to this bluish color which you can copy here or set it to another hover color and right here we say that if the left button on the mouse if it's being pressed so button state pressed then we re 
if the display is false, we change it to true, and if, it, if the display is true, then we change it to false. So we're just changing the value. Um, now, I don't remember what this is called. I think it's called a ternary, ternary condition. Uh, I might have to correct that in the description if I'm wrong. But this is called a turn, ternary conditional statement. Basically, it's just like a if statement block, but it's done in a different way, right? So this is gonna, this variable is gonna change depending on what happens over here. So remember, display is a boolean type. So we say we check our condition in here. So if display is equal to false, if this is true, then we display what happens after the question mark. So if this is true, then we will. If if display is equal to false, then we will change to true. If this statement turns out to be false, then it will do. It will execute this statement, which is after the semicolon. So um, this is just a brief little lesson on ternary um, conditional statements. Sorry if I'm stating that wrong. You can use if statements if you want. It's up to you. I'm just trying to show you different programming methods. The more methods you know, the better the program you are. So uh, let's go to our draw method. Now basically this is simple enough. We're going to draw our our button to the screen and then if display is equal to true then we're gonna draw our our actual word to the screen and as we run this program we get when we press it when we hover over it, it changes colors we press it we get the word and we press press it it deselects the word now one thing you're going to notice is that sometimes it flickers and sometimes it doesn't open or close the first time you press it. The reason being is in our update method we say that mouse.left button equals button state pressed. Well our update method runs about 60 times per second which means that when you press the button it could count it as a few it could count as probably like 10 clicks could count as five clicks or whatever all in that one press because you're not you can't press down the mouse button fast enough to count as one press in the game world right so um there's ways to get around this to detect it as one press but those will come in subsequent tutorials when I teach about to teach you diff um about single key presses and those tutorials will be coming fairly soon and um, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be learning about loading custom mouse pointers into your program, which a lot of people find very interesting. So hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching this, and bye.